If you've only seen the anime, then don't worry, you're in the right place. There will be no discussion of anything that has not happened in the show. If you didn't know, the Spy Family manga has some of the most creative volume covers that I have ever seen. It features the main characters sitting on designer chairs that reflect their personality. And I've dug through these to find details about our characters that we wouldn't have known otherwise. Volume 1 and we have Lloyd Forger because of course who else would it be but our main character. He is sitting in what is called the Grand Confort. This was a chair that came in an absolutely massive set of furniture. Now in addition to the chair we can also see that Lloyd has placed a number of items underneath the chair tucked away where they can't be seen. This is going to be in contrast to some of the ones up ahead so remember this. Volume 2 and we have Anya Forger sitting on the marshmallow sofa. This one was created in 1954 by Irving Harper. If there's one word that could describe this chair it is bubbly. It is so bright and colorful and it describes Anya's personality so well. However one thing about this chair is that it isn't like a beanbag or a big fluffy couch. It's not something that you can sink into. It's very clinical and I think that's almost on purpose because this chair wasn't just designed for residential purposes it was actually designed for commercial purposes as well and I say this because it kind of reminds us a little bit of Anya's past in the laboratories and leaning into this a little bit more even though the chair is now mass produced at the time it was released only 186 were ever made and while I don't know if it's intentional or not just the fact that so few of these were made makes them feel like an experiment in themselves and it really got me thinking Anya might not be the only psychic out there and if that's the case then where are these other children? Now unlike Lloyd the only thing that Anya has with her is her chimera which was also the only thing that she had at the orphanage which made me realize that this cover is actually just a snapshot of Anya right between her clinical past and her bright and colorful future. Volume 3 and we have Yor of course if it had been anyone else chairs would have been thrown. Now she is sitting on the La Chase which is a chair created by Ray and Charles Eames. This chair is really interesting because it was actually never put into mass production. Apparently it was too difficult so it mostly just remained as a prototype. It was actually inspired by a statue called the floating figure which was meant to represent represent womanhood which to be honest is probably not the most original idea in art but here it actually kind of makes sense. You see yours conflict really comes down to the two sides of her the killer assassin and the desire to be a loving and caring mother and wife and as we've seen in the later episodes she has a lot of insecurities around this. I think the chair does a really good job of representing your it also ends in these two spikes on either end which just reminds me of her weapons. Volume 4 we have bond in the ball chair because what else would you give the dog? Now something I really want to draw attention to is that this chair is very often used in sci-fi shows. Shows like Mars Attacks or Men in Black or anything that depicts the future. I, I'm sure that's not intentional but it works so well I'm going to accept it. Volume 5 we have Yuri Breyer sitting on the Barcelona. Now I don't want to spend too much time thinking about the chair because I think it's just a very practical choice. It makes sense. It is just a piece of foam on top of a steel frame. Not much to look into here. Instead what's really interesting about this is all of the things around Yuri. Starting with what's underneath the chair which is mostly spy equipment but more specifically communication, it's listening devices, it's everything you need to know to pick up intel which really reminds us of just how close Yuri is to Lloyd. He is so close and he is listening and watching and even if he might not suspect that he's Twilight he's still there and any sort of slip up could spell disaster. Now I want to talk about the flowers in his hands because they're actually different to what's in the anime. These are white orchids but in the anime they use roses. Now I had a look around and I couldn't find anything that really stood out as to why except for a couple of theories about the idea that the meaning of the white orchids was lost. However I do want to talk about the meaning of the white orchids because we are talking about the manga here. Now these white orchids have a couple of meanings but generally it seems like the idea is purity and new beginnings. Now Yuri gives these flowers to Yuri meaning that whatever meaning he is giving to the flowers is what he's giving to her. Now I think both meanings actually work really well here. Yuri obviously sees Yor as a pure being and not as the killer assassin. Now the other one is the idea of new beginnings and this works so well because even though we can see that Yuri is distrustful of Lloyd, I think that his desire to see his sister succeed in life and have a good life is there. We even see in an earlier conversation between them that he is interested in making sure she has a good life and is able to find someone that she cares about. And while he might not ever say it, these flowers tell me that he's showing it. Volume 6 and we have Fiona on the heart chair. This is the heart cone by Verna Paton and it is 
something else, honestly. I think this one really speaks for itself. Fiona wears her heart on her sleeve, at least for us. What I really like about this one are the details underneath the chair. Starting with the picture of Yor with the scissors in them, that's just a great representation of their relationship with each other and their rivalry. And then behind all that, we can see the wedding outfits, which is just alluding to her end goal, which I'm sure is no surprise to anyone. But it does make me think, how far does this go? How far will Fiona go for Lloyd? Would she put the country at risk for Lloyd? And I think that's a question that might have to be answered at some point because that conflict is going to be there between her desire to be the perfect spy for Lloyd and Lloyd himself. Volume 7 and we have Damien sitting on the willow chair. This was made by Charles René Macintosh. And there's a lot here. This chair is big and imposing and throne-like and yet sat right at the front absolutely dwarfed by it is little Damien. I think this is a great representation of the seat that Damien needs to fill, the stature of his family and what they expect of him and where he is right now which is not fulfilling it because he's too young. And this image double downs on that by having all of Damien's toys behind the chair where he can't even see them. He's put them aside in order to pursue this family value. Also a little detail here they have a cue ball on the ground that has the number seven on it which is the volume number it's, it's it's a nice detail volume eight and we have frankie this is the eames lounge chair and this is an interesting one because when i first saw this i didn't think that it actually fit him it it looked too swanky and i don't mean that to insult frankie he's very lovable but he's a little scrappy however when i started reading into it this chair actually started to make a lot more sense this chair is very popular even today you may have seen this chair before and because of that, it has one of the largest counterfeit markets of any chair there is. And who better to sit in it than our master counterfeiter? And haphazardly thrown onto the ground, we can see all of his counterfeiting documents. We can also see this one magazine book. I'm not quite sure, but it has the number eight on it because this is volume eight. But also it has the word love on it. And we've already had a couple of scenes where he's either pursuing love with a failed date or has an interest in love. And we've seen that. And the fact that it's made it onto this front cover makes me think that by the end of the series we could potentially have that happen for Frankie. That could be a successful pairing there. Number nine and we have Becky on the coconut chair. This one is the perfect rich girl chair mostly because you can sit on it in any way you want. There is no proper way to sit on this chair but you will always be comfortable. Sit on it upside down, sit on it on the side, however you want. Becky's lying on it. This chair is designed for someone who has a padded cushioned life and I don't mean to say that to be insulting. Becky is so lovable because she embraces who she is and we can really see that because of all the clothes and hats and all these fashion items just spread out in front of her. This is a girl who is very in tune with who she is and she shows it on this cover. This one also has the little detail of a number nine on it. Number 10 is a spoiler and we will not be looking at it. Fortunately it does not have any chairs on it either so there's no need. Number 11 and we have Damien's friends. I'm not going to try and pronounce their names. I think it's Emil and Ewan but I'm sure that's wrong. The most notable thing about this is that everything here ties to Damien. First there's the little picture right at the front down on the ground that is just the three of them together but more importantly the design of the chairs may look familiar. You see, they were also created by Charles René Macintosh, the exact same creator as Damien's chair. In fact, if Damien's chair was the one at the head of the table, these two are the dining chairs along the side. It just makes so much sense. Have you watched Oshinoko? Well, if you did, you might have missed some things from season one. That's why I made an entire video where I scrubbed through and found all of the little details that you might have missed right here.